Drivers who switch and save with Progressive save over $700 on average, and those savings add up. Imagine what you could buy in the future. So, yeah, I used the savings from switching to Progressive 50 years ago to finally buy my dream car. It's a self-driving flying car, but we just say self-flying now. You know, because it's the future, and cars fly in the future. So switch to Progressive and save big, because those savings can add up in the future. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive in 2020. Potential savings will vary. My mom is 81, and she's having trouble walking, taking care of herself, and remembering things. There are expectations. My mom feels I'm her daughter, and I should be able to do for her. Sometimes the help they need is more than we can do alone. CARE makes it easy to find senior caregivers who live nearby and know how to help. I love my mom, but I, I need some help. The best decisions are made with CARE. Find help for your mom or dad at CARE.com. With Eversense, the long-term sensor helps me spend less time dealing with my CGM. I only need two sensor changes a year. If you're on multiple doses of insulin, you might greatly benefit from the Eversense E3 CGM system, the only continuous glucose monitoring system that lasts for up to six months with one sensor. Still doing frequent sensor changes? Break free today with Eversense. For important safety information and to learn more about Eversense, please visit eversensediabetes.com safety. The Therapy is a Christian podcast is all things mental health and Christ. We specifically talk about how mental health and God are merged together to foster growth, healing, and making mental health a normal conversation. I'm your host, Roz and Renee, and welcome to the show. Hello and welcome, and welcome back to another episode of the Therapy is a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Rosalind Renee, and girl, I am so excited to talk to you this week, sis. So um, I record the podcast like two weeks ahead of time. I try to give myself some buffer room. I'm doing better, y'all. Like, listen, listen, that struggle season I was in this me this year has really done your girl some justice. Okay, flips hair um, that's in a ponytail, but... I've gotten better with my recording and making sure that you all get your episodes consistently on Sundays, girl. But um, last week or this past Sunday, I announced I was pregnant. So (laughs) I've been saying I'm going to share some news with y'all for like the last couple of weeks. You probably have heard me fighting for my life breath wise on the podcast because I'm going (sighs) and talking. It's because I am. Pretty much by the time y'all hear this, I am six months pregnant. So I've been holding this back from y'all, which has a lot to do with um, why this year was really rough for me. Uh, We found out I was pregnant on Mother's Day and it was not planned. Okay, so all of my moms that have found out they were pregnant and they did not plan that baby. I feel you, sis. Okay. Um, and so we are very excited. We're having another boy. I am so excited to have another boy. As I said before, I don't have to switch my brain or buy anything. And it's so, so exciting. But I'm so excited to have two boys. They're literally going to be two years apart exactly. And it's just wild to know that uh, we're growing our family. So I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who already sent congratulations and lots of love. Um, it's just, it's so fun. I'm so excited to have another baby. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the podcast. Um, just a couple quick housekeeping things. If you are not subscribed to my email list, definitely join my email list. I have been sending out a weekly email the past couple of weeks. It's like my weekly reflection. I love typing that email up. It's just I literally treat my email like they are my best friends. And I genuinely mean when I send emails, like I want you all to feel like I'm talking directly to you because I love, love interacting with you all. And it makes me feel like we're friends. The second thing is follow me on Instagram um, just because I'm always over there running my mouth. And third, follow my YouTube channel. I posted a vlog this week um, and I plan to post one next week of just like my week um and then hopefully do some sit down videos so all right enough housekeeping so last week we talked a little bit about um 
you know, managing your emotions. And in that podcast, I kind of went through a lot of things related to, you know, just kind of my story on why I want to talk about it, what negative feelings are, um, and also talked about the difference between avoiding and managing your emotions and kind of went through briefly with what avoidance coping is. So I wanted to do this series in particular because I have found from being a counselor um, and even my own personal story that a lot of us in a natural human way just don't like dealing with hard stuff. It's really uncomfortable. It's really challenging. And facing your emotions is very exhausting because it requires a lot from you. And also the timeline in which you handle these difficult emotions looks different for everyone. And so like in the age of where Therapy is way more accepted now and there's not as much stigma, even though there is still a lot of stigma around even the process of going through therapy, just to be going to therapy, just to say it, but like really addressing things and changing is more of a conversation. And so as a therapist, what I see a lot often is really this idea of avoidance coping. Um... And so I was just going to have a couple disclaimers um, at the beginning of this podcast. This podcast does not replace you going to get mental health counseling. My goal is for you all to have more awareness and have more understanding of these topics or what comes up for you, um, not only more personally, but spiritually. So you can take those things to God and also take them to your counselor so that you can kind of work through them. But please use this podcast not to like try to, you know, for yourself, navigate through this alone. You got to do this with God. You absolutely have to do this with a counselor. Um, In the next podcast series, I'm going to really talk about the Holy Spirit has really been on me about sharing the hope of Jesus, because I feel like as believers, we have an advantage with Jesus. And I feel like I have kind of shared a lot of these topics, but. I don't want you all to feel pigeonholed into not knowing that Jesus is really our hope and that because we have him, we are literally at an advantage from the rest of the world. And so because of that, I really want to talk about the hope of Jesus, because although these things are things that we still have to address, we have a spiritual advantage because Jesus has died for us. So I'm going to talk about that in the next podcast series, but today we're going to talk about avoidance coping. So first I want to say, this takes work. Like, this is not something that is going to be easy. It is not. Dealing with things that you avoid naturally is not going to be the easiest thing for you. Practical sense, it takes work. It's exhausting. You are going to want to give up all the time. You're going to not like your therapist at some point, you're not probably going to like God at certain points with things that have to constantly be brought up. But I promise you, there is hope on the other side of this. Sitting with hard feelings is not fun. Um, However, the more you do it, the more you'll see your ability to do so. And I won't say that on the other side of dealing with one thing, you're not going to be hit with another. There are things that still pop up to this day for me, even having had been in counseling and being a therapist. I am no, there's no I've arrived because we all have real lives and we're all dealing with things personally. But I also want you to know that this is not a shame tactic. Like none of this is is ever going to be equated to shame. Me sharing these things with you all is helping you understand that they're there versus you avoiding them and really I don't want you to ever feel like and I heard this from an amazing black woman I love I follow her her name is my leak she shared a real Instagram and basically I'm summarizing what she said but she said you cannot feel like you're a bad person or you're bad at something you never learned like the difference between being bad at something you were taught there's a difference between being bad at something you were taught but don't consider shaming yourself about something you never learned. You're not bad at something you never learned. You're not bad because you never learned how to express emotions. You were never taught 
You were never given the tools. Oftentimes, most of us, anytime emotions were brought up, we were immediately met with stop crying. Don't feel that way. I don't know why you feel that way. It was always like shut off or dismissed or not heard or not validated. So to even know how to do it and feel safe, feel heard, feel acknowledged. Most of us are adults and have never at one point had somebody acknowledge what they did to us and how much it hurt. We may have had it later in life, but even the acknowledgement may have felt disingenuous or the acknowledgement might have been coupled with, well, that was so many years ago, you shouldn't feel this way. And so when there's a lack of acknowledgement, there is a lack of safety. There is a lack of accountability. And so because of that, you may feel very hopeless and feel, feel very powerless in your walk towards being able to address these things. So the natural thing is to avoid because avoiding it feels in the moment better than addressing it or feeling the emotions. And so what I'm going to talk about in this podcast is what avoidance coping is, um, why it isn't healthy, but avoidance coping. And I'm also going to talk about avoidance coping and anxiety and how it manifests itself in that way. And then I'll give you some tips from a faith perspective and how you can actually do some things practically to start addressing this. In the next podcast, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can manage your emotions in a healthier way. So I'm going to take kind of, we talked about last week and this week and kind of bring it together for some strategies that you can use to help you know how to kind of navigate these uncomfortable emotions in a very healthy, but also practical way. Okay. So what is avoidance coping? So I'm going to also link below the article. I pulled up some of this information from, I'm going to add my story into some of this and some of the things I've researched, but feel free to read that for yourself if you um, are a nerd like me. Um, So avoidance coping, also known as avoidant coping, avoidance behaviors, and escape coping is a basically an unhealthy form of coping in which a person changes their behaviors to avoid thinking about, feeling, or doing difficult things. So this looks like so many different areas, but most of the time it's kind of our way of telling ourselves, okay, I'm just going to forget about this, which in a way seems cool, but you still are ruminating on it. You're still thinking about it. You're still, you know, wanting to address the problem but don't because you tell yourself I don't want to deal with it avoidance coping can also be um, something you're not realizing you're doing so that could be I was talking to my clinical supervisor last week and it was coming from a place of like if something is extremely uncomfortable you impulsively make a decision to leave Um, so that could be a job you just say oh I don't like this and you move on instead of kind of like pushing through something or a relationship, you immediately see something, you're like, oh, I don't want to deal with this, or it's bringing up things in you that are uncomfortable, like rejection or abandonment or what, what, whatever you might name. And instead of kind of like working through that for yourself, you just immediately disengage. And so avoidance coping involves trying to avoid stressors rather than dealing with them. And so avoiding, avoiding stress might seem okay because you kind of try to become less stressed but you ultimately it's ultimately going to manifest and instead of confronting or dealing with the stressor you you essentially just try to reduce any feeling that's going to cause you to feel unsafe or uncomfortable and really what I like to say is uncomfortable and so this becomes very much so an anxiety point for a lot of people to deal with anything that would essentially address them not being perfect, address them having to address something that someone else did. Um, I was reading this morning and I was reading in uh, Matthew was talking about the Beatitudes and was talking about meekness. And really um, what it was talking about was that God sees the things that people are doing that heart and heart and harm us but being being able to come to him to know that he is dealing with it and like girl baby girl that's hard okay like just 
things that people do to you, it's natural for you to just want to react or turn in on yourself and say you're the problem. And so most of us have not been given the tools to confront because confronting means that I have to now deal with this or I have to take responsibility for my actions being involved in this or I have to deal with the uncomfortableness of my choice and not all of our choices are going to be perfect. We're going to make some not so great choices or choices that are going to cause us to be in a season that may not be fun. And so because of that, most of us avoid. This can go even as deep as finances. Some of us may find that we might be in deep credit card debt because of whatever reason, the economy, all of this. Even having to take responsibility, we might blame inflation, which is a true thing. But having to really then be coupled with these things that we ultimately want to avoid. And so why isn't this healthy? healthy? So avoidance is going to manifest over time. It's going to manifest in anxiety. It's going to manifest in stress. It's going to manifest in your temperament being low with people like you're just very snappy. You're going to see this avoidance way of dealing with things manifest itself. And really what happens is it takes away our ability to take personal responsibility for what we can do. But some examples of this is we'll just also procrastinate. So sometimes we avoid things, but instead of us, you know, doing it or, or getting it done, we're instead thinking about it all the time. Like you ever have a situation with somebody and you get into it with them and you, um, cause I can think of a couple situations with me, baby girl. Okay. And instead of you dealing with it with them, you're ruminating on it over and over and over in your mind. Like it, it, it has not gone away versus you taking steps of like, let's schedule a time for us to talk about it or let's go to counseling about it. Or as a friend, I was in a bad place and I really, really needed you to be there for me. And when I didn't feel like that, I really wanted to just like cut you off, like just addressing it versus being like they're wrong I don't like them it's not gonna work that creates a lot of narratives in our mind that people aren't safe people aren't worthy to be trusted people are people coming into our lives are always gonna hurt us so imagine walking your life thinking this and not to say that it doesn't happen because I definitely used to feel like I can't trust people with how I feel I can't trust people with anything if I open myself up to them, especially spiritually. That was like very uncomfortable for me to like share how, who I was, and how I am spiritually, because even how I feel about God is very vulnerable. Will they understand? Will I be met with, oh, you just doing too much as a Christian? And so because of this level of vulnerability that requ- that's required when it comes to addressing versus avoiding we often don't feel safe and what i'll even go as far as saying i may do an episode on this is emotional safety this episode of the therapy as a christian podcast is brought to you by the dwell bible app dwell is a bible app that i've recently fallen in love with sis okay their mission is inspired by the psalmist who encourages us in psalm 119 to hide the word of god in our hearts Dwell has built the most beautiful listening and reading experience for the scriptures. They have over a dozen new recordings of the Bible. They've handpicked voices that will engage and inspire you. And they have the best versions of the Bible too, like the ESV, NIV, King James Version, The Message, and my all-time favorite, New Living Translation, and others. I recently got an opportunity to explore the Dwell app this week, and what I love about it is that you can create your entire listening experience. If you love the Bible, but you kind of find yourself on the go a lot, you can really, really engage yourself in scripture by doing a lot of customizations in the app. While you're listening, you can play background music, customize reading to a specific voice, sleep to scriptures, which I thought was so cool. You can also access dozens of different types of reading plans. The reading plans allow you to listen to specific books of the Bible, maybe in a week or a month, 
listen to the entire Bible over time and access plans that may be specific to what you're feeling at the time. There's even a place for every single plan where you can actually see how long it's going to take you to listen. So let's say you're going on a road trip with your friends and you all want us to listen to music, listen to the Bible. You can do all of this inside of the Dwell app. So I love this, especially if you're on your commute to work or school, you can really, really plan out maybe specific days where you want to engage in listening to the word of God instead of listening to other things. I love the listening and reading feature because it gives me a chance to actually listen as someone reads the verses to me. So I think that this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal app. To get started with Dwell, go to dwellapp.io forward slash therapy or visit the link in the show notes to get 10% off a yearly subscription or 30% off for life. 30% off means you save $60. So make sure you visit Dwell App. That's D-W-E-L-L App. A-P-P dot I-O forward slash therapy and commit to scripture for the rest of the year or for life. Now let's get back to the show. This episode of the Therapy is a Christian podcast is brought to you by Christian Healthcare Ministries. So girl, let me tell you, with the rise of inflation, gas prices, groceries, everything is gone up so much this year and it's sometimes so hard to kind of rationalize because financial stress is actually very very stressful to a lot of us because it really really impacts our feeling of security and so even if inflation is rising you may not have gotten a raise at your job or feel like you're making enough money you may be doing all of the right things consistently but this economy is just busting your budget did you know that there's a budget-friendly solution to the rising healthcare costs? There is, and it's Christian Healthcare Ministries. It's America's largest serving health cost-sharing ministry. And I know for me with having a son, all of the last two years that my son has been alive, I have gone to the pediatrician probably more than I've ever been to the doctor. And it's so wild to see the constant, constant medical bills that I get in the mail regarding my son. He had to get ear tubes last year. He got multiple ear infections. So we were always going to the doctor. And so Christian Healthcare Ministries is a health cost sharing ministry that enables Christians to carry each other's medical bills and basically lift each other up in prayer. Since 1981, they've satisfied billions in eligible medical bills for hundreds of thousands of Christians. Do you think you could benefit from this service? I think you could, sis. So why don't you visit chministries.org slash podcast to learn more. Or I'll go ahead and put the link in the show notes for you to check it out. Now let's get back to the show. We feel like we've experienced so many years. Yeah, I'm going to have to do it for something that girl. We've experienced so many years of lack of emotional safety. So you might have been safe in your house. You might have been safe, you know, physically. But emotional safety is a lot deeper because it means I am comfortable sharing myself and being my authentic self with you and not being judged, not being criticized, not being rejected, not being abandoned. And to experience some of that in your life, you can often think and have the frame of reference that that is always going to happen. And so creating spaces of emotional safety can often cause us to avoid and avoid coping or have avoided coping. And so because of this, you know, it's really things pile up like like I know with the level of stressors it is with having a family, having a job, having a business, having a kid, having, um, you know, things God tell you to do, baby. OK, like the level of stress at times is so high, like you want to it sometimes avoid dealing. So that's where people can go into using substances. That's where people can go into shopping their emotions away. Um, making themselves feel better with other things versus dealing with it because it is not a natural uh, default. Like it is not a default for probably a good amount of the population to deal with emotions. 
more so now when you've learned the skills to do so because managing emotions is a skill it's almost like um let me think of something it's almost like drawing like if somebody were to give me crayons and a pen and a piece of paper I could draw stick people but I have not at that point learned the skill of drawing versus an artist who has the skill of drawing can probably draw shadows and facial features in a very much so artistic way that I can't because they have the skill. And so it's the same thing with this. Like I'm presenting this to you all as a means to help you understand that this is a skill that has to be learned over time. And so the more you learn how to deal with it and learn the skill, the less you will be. And having also a therapist that's going to confront you, like you telling them, my way of dealing with things is to not deal with them. Like I need help with being challenged on how to not avoid. And, you know, sometimes I can think of my therapist, you know, really helping me see areas I avoided a lot in because I just did not want to deal with it because it felt hurtful. Shame was a big one because shame really made me feel like I should do things a certain way. I should have been able to do this. I should have been able to, I should have known this at this age, or I should have did this, or I should have X, Y, and Z. I've changed a lot of my language to where it's like, I'm not a should person really as much anymore. I learned that over time because should is really shameful. It makes me feel like, because I didn't know something that I'm wrong or I'm bad. And anybody that feels shameful doesn't want to feel that way. So you just kind of avoid or even more so than anything when it comes to people who feel like they are, you know, they have it all together. They feel like they can navigate through the world because they have it all together. But really, there's a deep sense of longing and maybe more connection with other people. But when you close yourself off often, it's really hard to do so. And so avoidance coping really can be come up with anxiety, especially in relationships, because avoidance can create large problems over time, especially in relationships, because things pile up. You get into it with someone and then y'all don't address it. Have another argument. Y'all don't address it. Have years of arguments and they're not addressed. You're going to be pulling back years of things that happened. Well, you did this X, Y, and Z years ago. It was never addressed and talked about. And so it's overwhelming to work through it, but working through it can help bring up and address these two different perspectives. And a lot of things, what I tell clients oftentimes, especially when you're dealing with people is you are dealing with another human with another experience, another perception, and another ability to think differently. You don't have control over that. And so because you don't have a control over that, that doesn't always necessarily mean you're right. Sometimes our feelings to avoid, like, I feel like there's always a partner that's like the one that wants to address it. And then there's one that doesn't want to address it. I'm the one that doesn't want to address it. My husband is very much so the one that wants to address it. But oftentimes you don't have the emotional capacity. So there are a lot of times I have to take breaks when we talk about heavy things because I get so revved up. I don't want to say anything rude, but even learning our communication style dating him 10 years, being married almost five, still learning how to not avoid things still to this day. So it doesn't mean time is always a factor. There are different ways that you have to learn how to not avoid, but these things do pile up. And this pattern can really also impact um, our thoughts, the way we think our way out of bad situations to avoid getting hurt. We become very engaged in trying to think of a solution rather than acting on one. So instead of you trying to work for a way to actually fix the issue, you work a way to try to get out of it. Girl, baby, this is me, okay? I can't tell you how many times as an entrepreneur, uh, and and, you know, I, I know that, you know, not everybody that listens to my podcast is an entrepreneur, but just I do feel like it's something God has positioned me to do in this season. And so there, I can't tell you how many times when it gets hard, I'm like, I just go, go back to work. And that's me avoiding the pain and the discomfort of what I might be experiencing that day, knowing that this is something that God has 
placed in my place in my path for me to do right now so instead of me trying to work through the hard parts of it find solutions get organized I'm trying to find a way to escape all this and go back to work so same situation could be for a lot of people is like instead of you dealing with sitting in the uncomfortable feelings of you made a mistake or it's just hard right now or you wasted money or you had to make a really tough decision instead of you facing that sitting through it, you always try to find a way out of it that's the way you can tell if you deal with performance um I mean not performance um avoidance coping and so I kind of want to bring this into a faith perspective really quickly because I think that we can sometimes forget that Jesus was that dude and that what he did was just off the chain like his entire message of the good news of the kingdom was so different and overwhelming it went against the natural thought process that everybody was used to they were used to you know doing things by the law and all this kind of stuff that even the disciples were like who is this man where he does all these things and like responds to the pharisees in this way like jesus was so off of like avoiding he was more into addressing and so oftentimes this is where we can constantly you know why we may go back and forth about who we are with God because God has to constantly remind us of who we are constantly constantly remind you of who you are constantly remind you of how amazing you are because in the moment most times you may not feel like it but a lot of times in order to even sometimes get to a place where you can really see who you are it means dealing with all the stuff that was there beforehand because when you are born again you receive Christ but there is a sanctification process there is a lifetime of you learning to connect to God and be righteous because righteousness doesn't happen just like right off the bat we're justified because we are then not subject to the punishment of our sins through Jesus, but you are still having to walk the walk of righteousness because you can, you can just do your life and not think that you have to be righteous, but with God, he is going to purify you to make you righteous. He is going to make you do things that are just like off the chain, not what your family did, completely going against the grain because that is our walk. And so most times it is addressing these things to do things in a more healthier way. So kind of more practically, like what can you do practically? And it really is more like by your your stress release strategies. And essentially that could be you going for a walk. That could be you journaling. That could be you talking in community. I don't think I've talked about this as deeply as I would like, but like, community is such a gift from God it is probably the most underrated not talked as much about things I know people say oh I need community that kind of, but like true authentic community is the place where sometimes you let these things out I can't begin to tell y'all the conversations I've had with friends and I literally write on my list of gratitude often like having great friendships because it has taught me to be vulnerable and authentic within friendships because I'm then sharpened by the people that I'm close to because of these things that I hold in because there's a lot of times I have a lot of thoughts about things that I could do better in x y and z and sometimes i just need to be told i'm doing a good job as a mom i'm doing a good job as a wife and that may not always come from me saying maybe coming from a friend or that i need somebody to just rationalize through my tears because most of the time i'm crying all the time what i feel and i do understand that we've all kind of experienced some level of hurt and pain in relationships but to what degree are you going to continue to place yourself in a place where you don't get to experience these things because of past situations? And it's hard to trust people. Um, but at the same time, that is probably one of the most authentic gifts God has given us besides Jesus and relationship with him is community. And it's just a beautiful process to have that and be able to experience that. 
And so sometimes you have to have these conversations in community. You have to have these conversations with a therapist. You have to have a safe place that can just empower you to help you deal with these stressors. And ultimately, this is how, you know, learning how to be open with God. Like, maybe I'll do a podcast on that, of just like not avoiding God. Like, truly looking at God in the eyes of a relationship, not religion, where he, where you think he's limited by your feelings and what you've experienced. Not one thing, I don't care. When I say, I don't care what you have done, there is not one single thing that's far off from Jesus. It's, it's, it's not even... There's not one thing that's far from God. Because again, nothing new is under the sun. Like all the things we're experiencing are things that they were experiencing back when the children of Israel left Egypt. So it's not anything uncommon. It's just we're in our certain space and time where we're dealing with it. And so we think that God is far from these things and that we don't we we can't we can't wrestle with him about it. But that's the whole point of being vulnerable with him is wrestling with him about it. And so um, it can be really hard. And I I definitely understand that because it's taken me time to be authentically vulnerable with God. But just that is a place of understanding that you can't avoid the one who knows you the best. Like there's no way you no matter how much you try to run from God when you are his there's no running away. Like there's no, there's not one place you can go. So I think when we think that we can, that's when we get into the place of rebellion and we can get into a place of a lack of humility. And that's just a dangerous place to be spiritually because it pulls you away from that presence of God and we need the presence of God. And so, you know, I think um, I'll talk about it in the next podcast, just some more strategies on how you can overall manage your emotions. But really with avoidance, it's coming to a place of understanding that you can't hide from everything. And sometimes there's places and, you know, times to do it in a healthier way. Like I'll talk a little bit about compartmentalizing, like, like if you go to work, you can't be crying at work all day. But like, how can you compartmentalize maybe your emotions to do your job? so that you can kind of deal with this better. And some days it's better than most. Like some days it's your personal life bleeds into what you do daily and that just happens. And it is life, sis. You can't shame yourself for it. But just know like there's grace for that still. There's grace for that even being a thing. So um, I hope this podcast was helpful. I, please share it with someone if you think that they're avoidance coper because maybe I think at some degree we all are. And so that you, they can start to address some of the things that are on their mind as well. So I hope that you love the podcast. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Make sure you listen to um, the rest of the series if you haven't. And I love y'all. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a good week. Your favorite band's about to play a sold out show. And you definitely got tickets and drinks. Now hurry and make it back to your spot. Has this person and that person about 20 more. Ooh, watch out for feet. Hey. Just keep going. A little further. Oh, there's your friend. Over here. Right where you want to be. Close enough to see the set list. And they're definitely playing your song. When you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express. Don't live life without it. My name is Joanne. This is my father. I know what's happening with my body. I won't be able to take care of myself. When the time comes to get more support for your parents, care can help you find qualified caregivers nearby. What would help me is if there could be somebody there that could check in on you. I realize I have to do it. The best decisions are made with care. Find help for your mom or dad at care.com.